Now, not every single formula that you need is going to be on the formula sheet. Here's the list of formulas that are on the sheet. And from this, I would say that there are five formulae that are not here that are really, really important for you to know. Let's look at what they are. Now, the first ones I'd probably start with are the ones for interest. That is simple interest and compound interest. Simple interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. And it's basically a formula that we can use to find the interest earned on an investment or a loan or something like that. Compound interest is a different formula, but it's basically the interest that is on your interest. So simple interest is interest on your money. Compound interest is interest on your interest. That's where they get the word compounded from. Now, this is one that you've probably seen before because I know that in Jamaica, it's done as early as uh, grade eight. But one of the important things that you have to know is when to use what. Simple interest, you can think about situations like a loan that just has interest on the amount year after year, whether annually or biannually or quarterly or stuff like that. Those are terms that you have to get yourself familiar with in order to solve simple and compound interest problems. The second one I think you should know is the Pythagorean theorem. That one is pretty important. You're going to see it sometime again. And it basically tells us that the sum of the squares of the shorter sides of a right triangle is equal to the square of the longest side of that triangle. So anytime you have any problems where you're trying to find the lengths of a right triangle, whether it's the shorter lengths or the longest side, then you're going to have to think about the Pythagorean theorem. Or even in real world context, if you're thinking about anything like a vertical or a horizontal side for something, once you know at least two of the sides, then it's probably going to come into play. But again, it's important to know when to use it. The Pythagorean theorem is only used for right triangles. As a matter of fact, some time ago, I looked through the, the, the trigonometry questions that students usually have problems with on CXC, and one of the biggest problems is using the Pythagorean theorem when it shouldn't be used with, with triangles that don't have a right angle. So remember, it only works for those. And getting practice is something that can really help you to be able to use it the right way, but that's one you need to have up here. The third one, inverse of a matrix. To find the inverse of a matrix, we basically multiply the reciprocal of the determinant by the adjoint. That sounds like a lot of stuff, and that's because the, the formula for the inverse matrix is, I would say it's basically three formulas in one. You can't divide matrices in the same way you can divide numbers, you have to find their inverse. I'm going to link a video that talks a little bit more about it, but the basic idea is that once you're able to find those, you just plug them in to find the inverse of your matrix. We can only use that formula if we are finding the inverse of a square matrix. That's what you have to remember. Can't work if it's not a square matrix. Why? I'm going to leave that one to you. See, you can put that one in the comments, but that's when we can use the inverse formula. The fourth one, probability. Probability is equal to the number of successes divided by the number of outcomes. And what it really does is just putting a value to the likelihood or the chance of something happening. So we need to use it when we're finding the likelihood of an event. That one is pretty important for you to remember. You have to be very careful too when you're looking for things like find the probability that this is at least so-and-so or at most so-and-so because you have, you have to look carefully at what those probabilities are. Now the fifth one, intersection and union of sets. This formula is one that I realize students don't really remember all the while. But basically what it is saying is that the number of things in the union of two sets is equal to the number of things in those two sets, but you have to take out the intersection. So you have the two things them together, but you just take out the ones that kind of like, like kind of like overlap. Now it's really important because we can use it whenever we are solving equations with sets or we're solving an equation with sets where they actually have an intersection. So those are just five that I would say, you know, it's, it's pretty good to use. Are there any you think that I left out that we 
could put there that would be a good idea, something that you have to remember, write it in the comments so that other people can see it and they can have like a little, not a thing, it could be like a little, like a, like a little list where people can look at and say, all right, these are the stuff that I should have in my head. I'm not a big fan of memorization, so I don't want you to just swap them and have them and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. You have to know when to use it and how to use it. So make sure you understand these concepts and understand these formulae properly. That's why I'm also going to put a link to some of the lessons and, and, and some of those. I have lessons, I think, on the Pythagorean theorem and the inverse of a matrix that you can get an idea that you can check out on mymathcamp.com. So check it out and use that to help you to prepare for your exam. Big up. Next time.